everybody. Welcome to today's live makeover. I would like to welcome our beautiful model, Amanda. She's with us in studio today, so we're going to be doing her glam today. Um, so for today's look, I had a couple requests to do everything start to finish. As you guys know, we're live, so I show you every step I do and kind of walk you through it. Um, but because we are live, to keep things not too long, I generally start with some things done, brows, whatever. So today we're going start to finish the only thing i've done is skin prep which i will explain to you as i get going so um one of the first things i like to do i just um picked up some new body makeup this is the kkw beauty skin perfecting body makeup a lot of times i like to address the chest area first um sometimes i'll just put a glow there there's other products i like but i have been liking this one lately so we're going to do a little bit of this on amanda's chest today so I just like a really big fluffy brush. And then I just like to go ahead and just do like a light, light layer. And this helps the foundation blend. Um, I mean, day to day, I don't think really any of us wear body makeup. <laughs> it's a little extra, but it's great for camera or special events. Like if somebody comes to me to get their makeup done, I will address everything that's seen. So I'll ask people what their outfit is for their event or whatever, and I will apply chest makeup if they would like it or if it's, you know, a strapless chest and they want some glow on the shoulders or something like that. So anyways, I just thought I would show you guys since I don't often do it on camera. So I don't like to go full coverage. I like things to be a little bit sheer, but I just feel like this does a good job sort of unifying the look. I feel like especially if you do like a full coverage on the face, it looks a little off if you don't address the entire body. So that's what I like to do. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I generally have been starting with brows. I used to do them at the very end of the makeup, but I have been liking doing them first. So what I like to do, I generally use Tarte Shape Tape as my primer and as my concealer for the eye. Um, I have found that this works really great because it's quite, um, it dries like quite matte for a concealer. And so it gives me a really good eyeshadow base. Um, and it's a little more lightweight than traditional eye primers. So this is generally what I do on the eye. So I'll just test a color. And I like to go, okay, so this is the shade Light Medium Honey. So usually I'll go in with like a little swipe and kind of see how the color is looking. I also did not test Amanda's coloring before we went live. So I'm, I'm showing you guys how I kind of like will match um, somebody's foundation. Okay, so this is the shade Light Medium. Um, so a lot of people tend to, when they do their eye primer, they go very, very light um, just because it makes the shadows look so good. Like they totally pop and are apparent, but I like to, um, I like to swipe my concealer outward and start to also conceal the face. I have found that most women were a little bit dark on like the inner eye. And so I like to add some concealer there before I put on shadow because I feel like it just makes everything look seamless. So that's another reason I use the Tarte Shape Tape as a primer because I conceal and prime at the same time. Um, but obviously I talk to my clients if they tend to be more oily or if it's a bright. If we're doing like all day, like 6 a.m. to like midnight, we're probably going to use like an actual eye primer. But generally Tarte Shape Tape works super great. I've been loving it. Okay, and Amanda has microblading, which looks great. Um, but Honestly, generally with microblading, I, I cover a little bit with concealer and then I'll kind of go in with whatever coloring I want on top. So I'm just lightly concealing it slightly. Do you use an eye primer, Amanda? I do. You don't? I do. Yeah, it's not necessary. It's more like a preference thing if your eyeshadow holds up well. Are you an eyeshadow girl? I try. I need like a makeup lesson. <laughs> well, perfect. Yeah. You have, you're going to have your own video yeah. after this so you perfect. can rewatch it <laughs> if you like today's look. It's fun doing models on my channel because I don't really, I used to, but I don't really ask them their, their makeup preferences before we start. They come, they get a <laughs> free makeover in exchange for being my model, and I pick what I want to do. So perfect. it's fun. <laughs> so we'll see. But they usually always 
No, not usually. They always love it. <laughs> <laughs> I did used to be nervous when I first started the lives. I'm like, because I'm used to, I mean, I, I did makeup professionally and I still do. So it's like you, you talk to the client as you do it. You get their preferences. You get a feel. So it's like it was weird at first to not do that. <laughs> and then be like, here you go. But everyone always loves it. <laughs> Okay, so I like to set that with a setting powder. So also you'll notice that I um, I went above the brows. So I go on the skin a little bit too. Because I do the brows before the foundation, um, If you when you go to apply foundation, you obviously want the face to look seamless, so you're going to bring the foundation down towards the eyes, and it's going to disrupt the product you put down. So for that reason, I conceal above the brows a little bit so I can kind of meet that with the foundation later, and it won't be a problem. Um, I am going more in depth with eyebrows today just because I have an eyebrow video here on my channel, but I, like I said, I generally don't show it. So for those of you that have asked, we're going to demo it today. Um, so I usually will use the dip brow or the brow whiz, but today, because she has the beautiful microblading, we're just going to do some powder. Um, so I love, I love Anastasia palettes and products for brows. She is the brow queen. Um, so anyways, I love the brow pro palette. So I usually just choose like a color that's going to go nicely with the hair and the coloring. So Amanda has the darker roots and the pretty sort of sun kissed highlights down here. So I'm going to pick probably like a warmer shade. Let's do, let's go with soft brown for now and see what that looks like. So I love a good angled brush for this. So I'll just go ahead and sculpt the brows. And I generally will go, like I'll start with a lighter color than I think because it's really easy to get your brows to look harsh. Like this, like look how dark it is compared to the pan. Like in the pan, it's sort of like this like very medium brown and it looks dark on the skin. So FYI, you don't always need a super dark shade. But generally I do the brow whiz first and then I top it with the powder. But the powders are super quick and easy. So if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. We do live tutorials here on my channel. So we have new models every day and there is a live chat. So it should pop right up for you. Otherwise it's right under the subscribe button. You just click live chat so you can ask your questions. You can say hi to pretty Amanda. Tell her thank you for being our model. Okay, so I, I like to brush these with a little spoolie as I go. So another reason um, I do the brows generally before you start filming is because I prefer to stand more directly in front of them so you can see if they're balanced, but I'll stand to the side so that you guys can see. Do you love having the microblading? You're I just going to wake up and be yeah. just perfect. <laughs> I love it. It is nice. I'm always so tempted to get it done because I just, I'm all about low maintenance. Yeah. It's nice. Like, I love the glam. Like, on my clients, I'm like, okay, let's go for it. Let's do everything. But day to day, it's like, eh. I do my makeup every day, but I don't like to take longer than, like, 10 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. So, I just kind of build as I go. That's looking good. Amanda has a naturally more of, like, a, a thinner brow, like a more narrow brow. Not, like, super thick and bushy so sometimes I'll add a little bit of like shadowing up top to add some fullness but I don't like to switch up the natural brow too much I feel like we're usually born with what is well balanced for our face you have well kept up brows Amanda thanks do you pluck them or do you go get no, them I done? like barely have to maintain them. really yeah I get like a few strays that's it Oh my, so you just literally have the best brow game going on. You don't have to pluck, and they're like always done for you. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. I feel like plucking is so relaxing. I always, <laughs> I love I know, I look brows. like every time, and there's like one or two. <laughs> That's like, so oh. funny. Okay, so I kind of, I do a mix of like padding and then swiping motions. 
So when I'm getting a nice clean edge, I like to go ahead and like swipe my line because it's gonna be really straight. Um, when I want to fill in the brows, like when I want to fill in the center, I'll usually do patting motions. So generally when I use the brow powder, I, I do like an opaque sort of wash of color, like I'm patting it in. Um, but when I do my brow whiz or my brow pomade before, I will draw in hairs. So that's usually why I do a combo. Like if I start with the brow pencil, I will draw in the hairs and then I'll sort of top it with powder to set it um, and to just have it look a little bit better. So that's how I do brows. I use the peasy. The next thing I like to do is I really love to brighten under the brow bone. And I talk about this all the time, um, but I don't always show it because it's um, super basic. But I like to take a light, generally a matte color, you can do something with a little bit of sheen. And I like a flat paddle brush. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this right on the upper brow bone. I love this when I'm doing like a more detailed eye look. Or if somebody's going to a wedding or an event or getting photographed, this looks really, really, really pretty. It's kind of essentially like highlighting for the eye. So if you look at a photo of somebody who's been highlighted and contoured, it's like all the high points of their face are highlighted. And if you think about it, under your brow bone is also a high point of the face. So it just looks really nice when you're doing any sort of powder highlighting and contouring or contouring the eye. It just is a nice little lift for the face. And it's generally pretty on all, all eye types, shapes, and everything. Okay, why I do this, I'm gonna make sure the live chat is pulled up on my phone so I can say hello to you guys. We'll let it load. Hi, Valerie, hi, Linda, mm -hmm. hi, Kelly, hi, Angelique. Um, hi, guys. Okay, Angelique said she's late. Did you mention what eye primer you like for long-lasting results? Okay, so Angelique, today I used, um, Tarte Shape Tape, that's generally my preference. I feel like it wears really well because it dries matte and I set it with a powder and then I also can conceal the inner corners. I talked about it right at the beginning. So if you watch like the beginning of the replay, you'll hear. But for long wear, if somebody has more oily lids or something, I really like the MAC Paint Pots. I feel like they can't be beat. So that's usually what I use. Okay, let's talk about our color palette for Amanda today. So Amanda has warm tones in her skin, caramel tones in her hair, warm tones in her eyes, and she wore a beautiful coral shirt today. <laughs> so I know that warm tones are gonna just look so great on Amanda. So I pulled a couple palettes. So I pulled the Natasha Denona bronze palette. I just got this and I've been using it nonstop. I love it. And then I pulled a couple of my Busy Art palettes that I really like. So this, these are the Theory palettes which you guys, I ho I'm so worried that they're gonna discontinue these because I was shopping on Sephora and they weren't, they used to have like eight of them and they're not all there. So anyways, if they still have them and you want one, grab one. So this is the Mink and then this is the like um, Siren. So this one's more peach. So this is like very much so um, what Amanda's wearing today. So I'm gonna be doing these mattes and then I think I'll do some from the Natasha Denona palette too. So I like to start by carving out the crease and creating like, enha either enhancing their eye shape or correcting things. So I'm gonna start with this very light sort of peach color and we're gonna use that as our base. So I'm gonna take a fluffy brush and just go ahead and dip it in. This is a very large, sort of a flat domed fluffy brush. And we're just gonna swipe this in the crease. And I, I pretty much always go above the crease, if you will. I don't like, I use the brow bone as a guide, but I always go higher, especially when I'm brightening with a color like this. I like when um, the model or the client opens their eyes to see a little bit of a wash of color. And this is very light. Like, let me hold it up by Amanda's face again. So this color I'm doing, look how light it is in the pan. Like, I think a lot of people wouldn't gravitate towards it as a crease color. But if you, um, since we're putting it over a concealer that's more skin tone, not like super, super light, it is gonna pull a little bit deeper. But it's doing exactly what I want. Like this subtle wash of color is huge. It's gonna make a big difference. Like all these little baby steps you take, like maybe you won't do them day to day, but when you really want to do a nice polished makeup look, they help it look super great. So if Amanda opens and sort of looks forward at the camera, you can see it just has like that wash of 
peach on her eye, which is super flattering. So we'll go ahead and do the other side. So this brush I love, like see how it kind of has like a more flat top, like it's beveled, but not a lot. Um, and it's very, very fluffy. So it spreads out and puts on a lot of shadow. I really like this one. I did a brush guide for you guys yesterday. I had a couple of people want to know which brushes I love and use and why. And we live streamed and it was like, it was only the second time ever where our live stream was just not a good connection. It was choppy. And when the video tried to upload to YouTube um, post live, it, it was like <laughs> no good. So we had to delete it. So if you guys are interested in learning more about brushes, like the ones I have and why I use what I use, um, let me know. I feel like brushes are underrated. Most people, I don't know why I get excited about them. I don't know why everyone doesn't get excited about brushes. So if that's something you guys are interested in, I will do it. So I also like to go over the lid with the light wash of this. I honestly probably will use this as her base lid color. Um, I'll either use that one or there's a warm brown from the Natasha Denona palette. Okay, so now we're going to do more of a mid-tone color, like a more brown. So let's pull up and kind of choose together. I think I will choose this guy. So I think we'll do kind of like, a, this is like a, a sort of a rust color, like a deep copper. And um, this is from the Vizier palette. So I'm gonna switch my brush. We're gonna go in with this guy. This is also large and fluffy, but this one's more beveled. Go ahead and close to me. So I like to do for this look that I'm doing that I just love, but this is flattering on everybody. I like to start on the outside corner and just sort of build up the product, swipe it out, and then work it up into the crease. And this is a fun color. I actually really love that Busy Art, I, especially for these two colors, like their row of mattes. They're really pretty. Um, in a lot of palettes, these warmer colors are really popular right now. These um, just super warm, sort of orangey and like red tone shadows. But I love the ones that have a little bit of peach in them more so than orange. And I feel like most palettes are like leaning more towards the orange side. So anyway, so they're just super flattering on everybody. So I am putting this in the crease, but also on the lid as well, on this outer corner of the lid. Pull up the chat one more time so I can answer your questions. Okay, and then Valerie said, yay brows. I always get here too late to see them get done. So I honestly, Valerie, I rarely do <laughs> brows. I usually start with them done. So today we did full brows for you guys. And the replay is always there for you. If you guys get late, there's always the replay gets uploaded a bit after we're actually live, but it's so fun to have you guys live. I appreciate all of you. Okay, so I generally do, I'll do little windshield wiper motions, like I go back and forth, and then I'll do little swirling motions to blend. So I do a combo of both. And I do love to sweep this outward. Go in a little bit. Okay, I love the way that is looking. Very cute. So I'm gonna go in with that same color. Actually, what, okay, when she, when Amanda opens her eyes, go ahead and open her eyes for me. I want there to be a little bit of more depth right there. So I'm going to have you close and then I'm just going to add a little bit more. When I'm doing little detailed touches like that, you don't want as much on your brush. I had just put on a ton on my brush because I was going to go do that other eye. So just be mindful of that. If you have lots on your brush, you have to go in more gently. So it's, I think it's those little details that really help your makeup look polished, like be mindful of how much is on your brush. Um, the shape of your brush makes a big difference. So just kind of think about what you're doing and why, and I think it just really helps the makeup look better. So what eyeshadow colors do you usually gravitate towards? Um, like browns and golds and like purples. Ooh, purple would be pretty on you. I feel like those like make my eyes pop a little, like the purple. Mm-hmm. I love the purples. 
I feel like the gold would be pretty too. I debated. I was going to do sort of a bronze gold look on you, but I do that so much because it truly is like so like gorgeous. Do, yeah. Yeah. Like if you choose the right shade of gold and like bronzes and browns, it's like stunning every time. But this is fun. This sort of like burnt orange shade. I don't do a ton, so. I wasn't, like, I'm not too much of a palette person. I didn't used to be. I loved to, like, I'd buy things and then depot everything mm -hmm. and have one big master palette that I would just use on everybody because then I kind of knew the shades, but I've been getting more stuff, and it's fun. Okay, go ahead and open for me. Gorgeous. Go ahead and close. So these Viseart Shallot shadows are formulated to actually work without a primer. And somebody commented about that on one of my other videos. I still use a primer if like someone's sitting on my chair just to just sort of out of habit and just to ensure things and stuff like that. I just use a primer because I know it's going to work good. But on myself the other day, I tried the Viseart's without a primer and I was super impressed because it still covered like any, you know, I, I don't have really discoloration on my lids, but there you can kind of see the veins through most people's lids and stuff, and it covered that really well. It looked really good. So if you have them and you want to try that, it did save me time. I liked it on myself because I'm like, oh, I can skip primer. That's like a whole minute of my <laughs> makeup routine. I can shave off. Okay, now we're going to switch to the T Natasha Dimonona palette and deepen things up slightly. So we're going to go in with this color Magma. It's essentially the same color we just put on, but like three shades darker. So we're gonna um, switch brushes again. We're gonna do a more small bubbled brush. I'm going with that. Oh, Angelique says she has oily lips, so that's a great tip. Oh, and Linda says Amanda is beautiful and she <laughs> loves your brows. I know you have such great brows. Okay, and then someone said, "Do you cut? Did you cut hair? Um, it always looks beautiful, no matter what you do to it." Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, did I cut my hair? <laughs> I thought you said, did I cut hair? I'm like, yes, I worked in this one. Um, yes, I cut my hair. I did do that. Thank you so much. Sometimes I wear my extensions. I had like the longest hair my whole life and it was always thick, but um, we had to do a bunch of fertility treatments to get our little baby and I feel like my hair is just like complete hash now, so I had to cut it. <laughs> but thank you, Linda. And I think there was one more question there. I'll get to that in just a second. Okay, so this is, like I said, it's just a deeper version of the color we put on. And I love doing that. I love doing tone on tone. So I, I love that this is the same color we just did just deeper because then I can deepen up the areas that I want to deepen up in. It's super great. So once we get that on there, then I start to choose a color for the lid. Um, I love shimmer lately. I've been doing a nice matte lid, but generally I actually, like I'll choose if I want to be all shimmer or matte at the end. I love to do shimmers in my crease generally, like keep everything all matte. And then I can kind of see how the makeup is looking on their eye and with their features if I feel like shimmer will be more flattering or if we want to do a more striking matte shadow. Okay, go ahead and open. Okay. What do you like, Amanda? Do you like more shimmers or matte? Uh, I like shimmers. You like shimmer? Okay. I do like shimmer. Let's do shimmer for you. Okay, let's do the Natasha Denona. I think I am going to do the shade silk and gleaming so i'm gonna hold this up by amanda so you guys can see so silk is very gold i know that's going to be stunning on amanda and i want it um just sort of a gradient with the shade gleaming so gleaming is really pretty it looks like a very deep rose gold with like some red undertones in it it's going to look good with the other colors we just did so i'm going to switch brushes again to um let's see i'm going to use like a little shader brush if i can find it Okay, here it is. So this is like a, a flat shader brush. So I'm gonna use this for the shimmer. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the shade Gleaming. So this is like the rose gold color. I'm gonna have you close, Amanda. And I'm gonna do this right on the center. I like to start near the lash line. That way I just deposit most of the product. And then when I work up into the crease, it can be um, like diffused nicely into the crease. 
And D- Natasha Denona has such great shimmers. That's the palette I'm pulling from right now. Her mattes are great too, but sh- her shimmers are so fantastic. I feel like some brands, the shimmers are a little more dry. They're just not what you want them to be when you apply them on the lid, but so far all these ones I've used are super great. So this undertone, like this shimmer shatter, it truly has like the exact undertones of the crease shadows that we've been doing, so it looks really good. So I like to do a gradient, like I'll pop that on the middle to blend everything, and then I'm gonna flip my brush to the other side that has nothing on it. We're gonna go into that shade Silk. It's a really pretty golden one. This is golden, it has like a, a peachy, it's like a warm golden. There's many shades of gold, but I like this one for Amanda. And then I'm just gonna work in, I go slow with my shimmer. I feel like whenever I just swipe it on, you get kind of that line of shimmer and it looks a little off, like the difference between the two textures. Unless you're going for like a cut crease, like a very, like you want that super defined line. I feel like you either want it or you don't, like you want the extremes. To me, the, the middle, like maybe kind of a line, but kind of not looks like off. I don't know, in my opinion, but. So we're just gonna blend that up. Super pretty. Yay, I'm glad you chose shimmer. <laughs> They're looking so good. This one's more glittery. This shade silk has some like, it's like a glittery shimmer, I like it. So we're just packing that on. And again, I'm sort of meeting it. I'm overlapping it with that center shade. So remember we did the darker shimmer in the middle um, and then we're going lighter towards the inner tear duct. Okay, and this is something I always like to do. I put, at the end, I put shimmer on my brush and I spray it with um, Max Fix Plus. And then right kind of in that tear duct area, I just like to add a more, more vibrant bit of shimmer. Like look at the difference. See how shiny this eye looks and how vibrant that shimmer is. And this one's more subtle. So that's what happens when you get your brush wet. And I like the formulation of Max Fix Plus to do that. I just feel like it always like performs well for me so that's what I do but you can get it wet with anything and I do it after I have the shadow on my brush then I spray my brush okay go ahead and open so it's just more vibrant it's just more intense more visible to you guys um so that's kind of a fun thing to know about shimmers for like day wear if you don't get them wet it's um just more subtle just more natural Okay, so we are, I do want to enhance, like deepen up the darker the outside corners just a little bit. And we can use any any brown from that. So this Viseart palette that I pulled, this is the Minx, I believe, number two Minx. I'm just going to use that darkest brown from it. And you truly can use, I have so many brown shades that just have like a deep, deeper brown undertone and that is great. A lot of people like to use black for this. I like to use brown generally and you want to be careful because this doesn't have like those punchy warm tones to it this is like more neutral and so I don't want to like really go in with it because then it kind of masks all that those pretty colors that I chose for Amanda but I like to do this um, before I do the liner it just kind of establishes some smokiness and some blending for me Go ahead and open. Just gives it more depth. Get this side. It's the same thing. So I sized down my brushes again. Now we're to like a tiny little guy. And we are just like, I'm keeping my movements really small. My circles are really little. And then I'm keeping it just right near her lash line. And swiping out. And I'm going lower than I want it to. Like I'm really working in that corner because I'm about to clean that up. Okay, so now we're gonna clean up under the eyes and then we're gonna do um, some liner. Okay, so I just got, so I love micellar water. This is what I clean under the eyes with generally. Sometimes I do makeup wipes, but usually this. Sorry, it squirted you. <laughs> it's the micellar water. I buy the biggest one because it has the little pump and it just fills up your, your little cotton pad. 
So these are cool. These are gauze, so they are slightly exfoliating, like in the best way, in a way that's like safe around your eyes. It's not like a scrub. But what I like about that is I feel like it really grips onto the product, especially since we used like a shimmer. So it's gonna clean up under the eyes easily and I can be very gentle. I do not like to like really tug at people's eyes and sometimes you, um, <laughs> it takes a little more effort to clean up the shadow underneath. So these are fun little pads that I got to try. And if I still see shimmer on the face, instead of continually trying to swipe it, what you wanna do is just toss your original pad and get a new one because your pad has shimmer on it. So all you're doing is spreading it around. We need to be nice to our under eye mm -hmm. areas. It's very delicate and very fragile. And it's like the hardest part to do makeup on. Like, if you're not gentle to your under eyes, over time it will get mm -hmm. <laughs> like difficult because the thin is so, the skin is so thin. Okay, so that did a good job. This pulled off all my glitter. You can turn it inside out and grab a little bit more. So now we're gonna do some eyeliner. Um, we are going to do, this is the NARS palette. There's like a really, really dark brown in here. There you go. So I'm gonna switch to a shader brush and grab like, see how it's almost black? Actually, I don't want that one. That one's a little too cool. Let me hold it up by Amanda so you can see. So I really like this one for liner, but it's a little too, like it's very flat. This doesn't have any warmth to it and I wanna keep the undertones warm for her. So I'm gonna pull one more palette. Okay, this is the Too Faced Born This Way palette. So this one, the very darkest shade, is nice and deep, but it has like a little bit of warmth to it. So I'm gonna put this on. Okay, um, oh, people are saying redo the brushes. Okay, I'll redo the, the brush video for mm -hmm. you guys. And then Linda said, okay, Natasha Denona palette, do you think the palette would work for someone who has cool undertones? Okay, so let me hold this up for you guys again. So this is very warm. So on a cool undertone, it will appear very warm. Like the orange undertones and stuff will be apparent. Um, but I still I still would use it, go ahead and close on someone with cool undertones. If, if you would like it, that look is very, very popular right now, those tones and stuff like that. And it's fun, makeup is fun. So if, if it's a palette you're interested in and you have cool skin, it will still look good. It will still look flattering. Um, it just be mindful that it does look, it will look warm on you. But it's fun to try. You never know till you try it. It has good, what I do like about that palette, like that warm palette, is it does have good like transitional colors in it. They're all warm, they're all very warm. But it has like neutralized warmth in there too. So it is wearable. Like if you throw in some of those on cool skin, it's definitely more wearable, if that makes sense. Okay, I am going to switch brushes. We're gonna do my Anastasia little guy that I like. And this is the Anastasia gel pot. So we're gonna do some gel liner on Amanda today. And then we're gonna do lashes. Do you wear lashes? I don't. I don't, don't do liner either because I can only do one eye. And then oh. like the other eye always comes out like one eye is perfect and one eye is just horrible. Oh, that's so funny. Same with my lashes. <laughs> Same with your lashes. <laughs> I get one on, but the other <laughs> side doesn't want to go on. Go ahead and open and look down for me. Perfect. I'm just going to go. So I'm going to tight line you today, Amanda. So that's just, we're putting on a gel liner and you're just going essentially right in between all your lashes. If you need to blink, you can. It won't mess me up. Um, you're just going in between all the lashes and it makes them look really, really thick and pretty. And this is easy. So if you want to start doing liner, just tight yeah. line because you cannot mess it up. So I'll have you look in the camera. I have more shadow under her eyes that I'm going to clean up, but you can tell just the tight lighting, how amazing it is. We're going to do um, liner on top too, but There's a question, Jules. Okay, I missed a question. I think mm -hmm. my chat loads slower than Kelly's. Let's see. Was well, it up higher? I think you did, although I may have missed you answering it. It's by um, Margaret. Oh, Margaret. Okay. Margaret has, let's see, gone to natural gray hair, and the hair on her lashes are almost gone, so she's looking for advice. 
Um, okay, so are you, just to understand your question, are you saying like you've been kind of losing lashes, you don't have as many lashes? Um, well, I'm just gonna ask for clarity so I can ask, answer your question correctly. But if your natural lashes are almost gone, um, if I'm understanding your question correctly, if you have been like recently sort of losing lashes, um, I would try a lash growth serum now um, to kind of resurrect your little lashes because the lash serum, what it, it doesn't really grow new hairs, but if you have had those active follicles recently, sometimes it will revive them. So I would do that. There's Latisse is the prescription brand. You get it like a med spa or from a doctor. That one for sure is great. Um, go ahead and close. I have heard good things recently about Grande Lash and Babe Lash. So I would look into that, do a little bit of research. Um, also, lash extensions can be fun if you don't have as many as you used to and you go to somebody who's very skilled. Um, they can apply, you can do the volume lashes, so they'll put a, a couple lashes, like a little fan, on each of your own natural ones so it thickens them up a little bit. So that's fun to try. I like the conjunction of the two. So I used to do lash extensions, and if my client was like, you know, to the time in life where you're kind of losing lashes, I'd put them on a lash serum just to re retain their natural lashes, and then we would just do some really natural um, extensions just so you have that. Okay, go ahead and look up for me and kind of over this way. Perfect. Let me get the, hit the inner tear duct. You're doing great for like never wearing. <laughs> it's very weird to have someone come at you with liner, but handling it like we've lost feed. Okay. Should I ask her? We liked it. It's done. Give it a second. Okay. It was not floating on the. Really? Yeah. Keep going though. Okay. So we just lost our stream for a second. Let me know, uh, you guys watching in the live chat. Let, tell me um, what you're seeing on your end. If we went out for a little bit, if you can see us, go ahead and look forward. We're back. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> for cutting out, guys. YouTube's pretty good when these live videos upload as normal videos when we're done. Um, YouTube generally will cut out, like when things cut out. But I'm I'm sorry if if our stream's sort of being choppy right now. Okay, so I'm gonna do Amanda's bottom water lane. I'm gonna go a little bit more of a smoky look today. I'm gonna tilt your head down. And then I'm going to go all somewhere on the water line up here. So go ahead and look down for me. Perfect. I'm going to lift your lid again. So from you guys in the live feeds, you can Sorry. blink a couple times. No, you're totally <laughs> good. Go ahead and look down. For you guys in the live chat, I would love to get some powder recommendations for you guys. So I am looking to try a new translucent powder. I have two that I love. I keep trying other things. I love the two that I have, but I would like to try another one. So I want to know your favorites because you guys always have good product recommendations. So I want to know what you guys are loving. I'm particularly looking for one that's like super long wear, like a little more. Um, so if you have oily skin and you're watching, tell me what translucent powder you like. I want to try some new ones. Do you have any you like, Amanda? Do you use? I use Bare Minerals. Okay. Like all their makeup or MAC. Do you do like the mineral foundation? Mm -hmm. Like the powder? Is it a powder or is it a liquid? I have a liquid and a powder. So like cool. when I'm in a hurry, I just do the powder real fast. I know. It covers really so good. Fast. Yeah. Does it? And then if I do like all day, then I'll do the foundation with the powder and it lasts. But I'm not a makeup pro. No, you're so good. <laughs> but you are like your own simple, face. Yeah. Go ahead and close. No, I love that though. I wish I knew how. I hear like so Like when many you see things. it, yeah, you like see people's makeup all pretty. And you're like, oh, Aww. I want to do that. Yeah. 
you know, it's definitely fun. It's fun to play with and fun to kind of know how to do a couple of things. My theory is that everyone should know three looks. You should have like your everyday. So what you do, like you're quick, yeah. like where you're like, oh, I, I feel like I look great. I feel put together, but like, it was so fast. So that's like one. And number two is like you're more like glammed up version mm-hmm. of that when you have like a little bit of extra time, mm-hmm. like, oh, the little, the tiny little extras. And then I think everyone needs to know, like, a bomb, like, the I want to like, be yeah. so glam. I need, look. like, the super glam. <laughs> I have the first two. I need you have the glam. first two down. Okay, look up for me. So I'm going to smoke out the bottom of her lashes. I keep cleaning up under her eyes and then <laughs> adding more makeup and getting full out. But I like to clean as I go. Okay. So I, since I did bottom um, tight lining, I like to go in and smoke that out because otherwise it's like sort of this harsh line on the bottom and I don't really love it. So and then we're going to put on your lashes. I'm so mm-hmm. excited, Amanda. So this is a, a smaller shader brush. So I just, I'm pressing with this and doing like little wiggle motions just to kind of blend it. But this is a hard brush, like it's dense, which I like, but you can't, go ahead and close for me. You can't really go in and um, do swirls or anything like that. So again, be mindful of your brush you're using. Okay, we're gonna do lashes, then we're gonna do face, and then I'll probably add a little more color under her eyes. So. Okay. Oh, good. We're getting powder recommendations. Thank you, guys. Okay. Um, oh, hi, Eileen. <laughs> Someone said the Thrive Cosmetics Filter Effects Soft Focus HD Setting Powder. I will look into that for sure. I have somebody else is mentioning Thrive Cosmetics. I've never heard of them, but I will have to look them up. Okay. So let's um, let's select a foundation for Amanda. We're gonna do NARS today. Probably. Shade medium 3.5. You're gonna try it. So I'll usually just do like a little dot of it on my brush and kind of, I go by the jaw area. And that's looking good. I'll just blend it so I'll show the camera. So this is gonna look warm on her face because she has a little bit of red undertones in her cheeks, which generally most people do. And that's why it's so hard for people to match their foundation. It's slightly dark. Okay, I'm gonna mix um, Vanitu and Patagonia. We're gonna get a little bit of a mixture. So a lot of times, like looking at Amanda, she's very warm. She has more of like a bronzy undertone, more so than like a pink. But a lot of us in our face, we carry like a little bit of redness, which is pretty. It just looks like natural blush or something like that. But when you're doing more full coverage foundation, it's hard to tell your true undertones if you put it like right there or something. You sort of have to step back and take into account like the whole body and what's going to look balanced essentially. So I like this brush. I'm just going to gently do like little pressing motions and then baby, baby little buffing like swirls. And I don't like to do too thick a foundation. You have really good skin, Amanda. It's like very smooth. I switched to Kylie's skin. You did? Mm -hmm. I love it. Really? Of like all the face products I've tried, I love it. Really? What are Mm -hmm. your faves? All of it. It's the whole line. Like the whole line. It's not even that expensive either. It's 120 for the whole line. For the, you, get you get like a kit. All, yeah, the oh, whole that's kit. Fun. And they're big. Like yeah, the products are big bottles. They're not little. They're the cutest bottles I've they ever seen. They are, and seen. Pink, like the pink cutest. Pink. <laughs> but I love so it. Cool. It's I love it. Well, your skin is like a testament. It's to it. It's very even. It's very smooth. Yeah, and it wasn't. It was getting blotchy, like I felt like really? before. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. And I've been using it like three weeks. Well, your skin looks fantastic. Because I exfoliated you. I'm going to turn you a little bit towards me as I do this side. So when I did Amanda's skin prep, I 
always exfoliate people. I use my Sonia Roselli Sex Appeal, which I have demoed for you guys um, a couple times. I love it. I love it because you can do it in chair. I love it because it's very, very gentle. It will never be too harsh for people. Um, it is on sale right now. I know producer Kelly got some <laughs> the other day. So I don't know how long it's going to be on sale for. Sonia Roselli never does sales. She has like one a year, but it's on sale right now. So... I'll link it for you guys. But anyways, I always exfoliate people. And then I do, I have like calming toners that I use, like hydrating toners. Um, I obviously have things to address oily skin, but most people are not oily. They're just more like in need of a good exfoliation. And then I have different um, moisturizers. But when I was exfoliating Amanda, like your skin <laughs> felt so smooth even before. Like most people all feel the skin. And sort of see like oh it's like a little rough right here or we need to do this or address this but yours felt great <laughs> so go Kylie skin, go Kylie skin. I know I was scared to try it too not try it I didn't know you know yeah well because everyone whenever there's scared. like a big name like attached yes. to it doesn't always mean good quality that's true but this one was awesome yay I'm glad you like it everyone was scared of the exfoliant that she did because mm -hmm. it's like a the a physical, yeah. yeah. Do you use that? Mm hmm I use it like twice a week. Your skin looks great. Thanks. Okay, so I, before I do under eye concealer, I'm going to have you look up, Amanda. I just like to do one final cleanse because products tend to travel. Oh, but before, actually, before we do the under eyes, I like to do the lashes. Um, I'm going to curl these little guys. Check on the chat. Oh, hi, Maddie. Welcome. Um, okay, more powder recommendations. Sydney Grace Cloud 9 setting powder is supposed to be a dupe for that Hourglass at the Yale setting powder. Ooh, that's cool. I have tried, um, I have so many Hourglass powders, and they are all so fantastic. So that's that's good to know. Okay, hi, Maddie. She said, here, Lee, what color eyeshadows um, did you put under her eyes, and what brush did you use? Her eyes look spectacular. Thank you. Oh, I can't wait to see. I know, yay. <laughs> Amanda has not seen. Maybe you can yeah. sneak a I peek in the like camera. My mouth and down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not everything. They look stunning. Okay. So, Maddie, we used, I'll tell you as I curl Amanda's lashes because it's so basic. I'm going to have you look forward. Perfect. And then I'm going to get in nice and close. Do you feel any pinching? No. Okay. Then we're going to give it a good squeeze. Curling the lashes is a true magic. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Do you use a curler? I don't. Does that pinch it off? No. Okay. It's honestly like, it's funny. I always like, I'm like, you guys use the lash curler, use the lash curler. It's amazing. But I feel like to so many people, it is kind of an extra step and it just is like a hassle, but it's magical. I feel like I never get my ends or yes. they like crimp funny. Yeah. So. Yeah. This one's pretty good. Like, it's see how one, it's huh? wide? Yeah. yeah. I'll show you guys. I'll actually hold it up by Amanda so you guys can see. So this one is kind of flat. A lot of them are, like, really curved. Like, it's like a circle chopped in half, but this one's more like an oval chopped in half. And I feel like this is more natural. Yeah. Like, it gets in all the groups. So I love this one. I'm going to – now that you mentioned ends, I'm like, oh, did I get it? <laughs> I did, but we'll – We'll just see. Um, but they also make like little baby lash curlers, like half ones that are like this okay. big. And people really like those for like getting, like you can get all the sides. Those are nice. So if you have the, the opposite problem of most people and your eyelashes are like way curly, flip your lash curler upside down and reverse curl. So mm -hmm. like curl them down and it will straighten them. And for you guys, the little half lash curlers, like the little baby ones are so good for that. So little tip. Okay, so we're gonna do, we're gonna do kiss lashes on Amanda today. So this is the style Jubilee. These are stunning. They're a little bit flared on the ends. They are um, double layers. So they're a little bit wispy on the ends, but they have like sort of these thick little chunks in the middle. Chunk isn't a good word to describe <laughs> something pretty. Like, they have chunks. They're stunning. <laughs> they have like these thick. I'll hold them up by Amanda's face because we don't have a PNG of these to throw up. Okay, so see how they like have like little chubby clusters, and then mixed inside is like little skinny clusters. 
those are generally my favorite because I love a good lash. I'm like, give me all the lash, give me so thick. But if you if they mix and match like the chubbies and the skinnies, you can sort of see the lid through them and they're just more soft but still glam. So this is a good like medium lash. Like this isn't like the glamest of glam, but it's like they're dense. Like you're getting something. I like these. Okay, and we probably, I think we're going to need to trim them for Amanda. So I'm going to have you look down. So Amanda's eyes are like, a lot of people sometimes are like when you close, your lid space is smaller. Go ahead and open. But then when she opens, you see more lid. So I'm, I'm actually going to try to not trim them. I don't know if that explanation made sense. I'm going to try to explain it to you guys. Oh, and then I will answer, Maddie, I'll answer your question about the shadows in just a second. Um, let me cut off the end. Okay, so generally I like the lash. Let's talk about trimming for a second. I'll give you guys some lash tips because you guys always lash, ask about putting on lashes. So this is actually a good tip um, for visual aesthetics looking good and then actually like helping you put them on. So um, we all know, I think that you trim the lashes to fit your eyes. Sometimes they just fit and you don't need to trim them, but oftentimes you do need to trim them. And so the reason I trim them, two reasons. One is like, if you've ever put on a lash and they poke you, like when you blink, you're like, oh, I feel mm -hmm. it. <laughs> have you had that? Yeah. yeah, they're too long. You have to cut them. Like in general, it's in the inner corner, like they're in too far. Um, and then the second reason for trimming them is obviously just for visual aesthetics. If they're too long on the outside corner, they look weird. Um, <laughs> they like hang down. Anyways, so, but the reason like, Sometimes I like to try, like I'm going to try this on Amanda without trimming because if you don't have lashes on the inner corner, like Amanda has these really big, pretty, you have like princess jasmine eyes. Okay. And so if I don't have lashes too, like close enough to her tear duct, it looks off to me. So I like that area to have a lash. It's just a balance. So if you at home are applying lashes and they, they feel uncomfortable, if they feel uncomfortable at all, you're probably putting them on wrong. I think a lot of people are like, ooh, I don't like them, you feel them. But when they are put on correctly, at first you're aware of them, but once the glue dries, especially if you put on a coat of mascara after, they should not bother you. If they bother you, they're probably put on wrong. So look down for me, Amanda, but don't close. Good. So we waited our 40 seconds. I bought a little fan, like a handheld fan to like dry the lash glue, but then I was like, oh, I don't know, it might be too loud, like her <laughs> mic will pick it up. Um, so anyways, it's downstairs. Okay, so I, I get the glue on, I place it on in the center, and then I just push in the inner corners. Okay, go ahead and look forward. But see how pretty that is in, on Amanda? Like we have enough lashes on the inside, but these aren't so long where they're like hanging down. So they look really pretty. Go ahead and look down for me. So keep looking down. You can blink as needed, but don't close. And that way you won't get glued shut. <laughs> That's never fun. <laughs> okay, as I put the glue on the other one and we wait for it to dry, I will show you, I will refresh all of you guys the shadows that we did on Amanda's say, I love, I love the way they're looking. Where did I put my lash glue? When I do makeup on clients, I'm so like, okay, everything has its spot. It goes here. But when I do it for the video, I think because I have one more dimension of like, like I have to explain what I'm doing. <laughs> and my stuff is just set. Okay, so this is, I'm doing black glue on Amanda today. So we did really pretty, um, sort of like burnt orange, like a red orange, if you will, color palette on Amanda today. And I love it. So we did a lot from the Viseart palette, the peach one. I think this is Siren. We did these two mattes. And then we went into the Natasha Denona bronze palette. This is, if you want these bronzy tones, if you want like the oranges, the reds, the rust, the coppers, like this is the palette to get. So I'll hold it up by Amanda's face so you guys can see. So we did a couple of these shimmers. We did silk and we did, this one's stunning. Um, these like peachy colors are so, so pretty on the eyes. They don't look as fun in the palette. Like I feel like we're all drawn to the gold. It's like, oh yeah, look at that, like super yeah. gold. But these pink ones are stunning. Like I love mixing them with the gold. So we did a lot of the gold on Amanda's lid, but we did a little bit of that. I call it pink. It's like a, it looks like a rose gold, like a red tone rose gold palette to me. So I did that on the center. So I generally did that. And then I did smoke it with a neutral brown. I am so funny with my brown. I need to find a brown, like a very deep brown that has like a lot of red in it. Like they're usually not warm enough for my taste. 
that should be my new quest. <laughs> I might want to let you guys know. Because I like to add, like when I do a color palette, I generally like to deepen up the corner. But sometimes if my browns are too neutral, I just, I wish they were warmer. I can mix. You can mix colors. You can mix like a red and a neutral together and it will look warmer on the skin. Okay, I'm going to kind of face you forward and do, keep looking down. How is your right eye feeling? Is it poking no, it at all? feels really good. Feels good? Good. So when you apply lashes, you come from above, um, and then you kind of push them into the lash line, but you want to keep them lifted. Like, you want to keep that curl. Okay, let's move on to under eyes. Let's do some tart shape tape on the end of today. Yeah, let's do that. I have a couple under eye concealers I switched between, but we're going to do that today. So we did, on her lid, we did, I think we did light medium. So let's also do that under her eyes. I think light, medium, honey. Sometimes I love the pink tones under the eyes. It's very brightening. I think on Amanda, it will look a little um, ghostly. So we're gonna do the light, medium. I want a little bit of gold under there. So what I do for my under eye concealer, on a client, obviously we're keeping things sanitary, so I'm not gonna use this brush on her face. But I actually, regardless, like to not use the brush on the face because I want to test it first. So I just put a teeny, teeny bit on my brush. This is the brush I did her um, eyeshadow primer with since it was this exact concealer. And I'll just dust a little bit like on this area of the face or you can do like the chin and you can see the tones in it. So this is brightening. I'm going to like it, but it's not too, too stark. If you go too light with your under eye concealer, it's bad news. It's going to look like there's shadows under their eyes because it doesn't, there's no tonal coverage for like darkness under the eyes, which Amanda doesn't even really have a lot, but most, most people have a little bit. So if you go too light, it's going to look kind of weird, like gray. So if you want to go really light, use a corrector or pick a concealer with like some undertones going on. That makes sense. I feel like I always get a ton of questions about under eyes, so give you guys the juice. Hmm. But see how like brightening that is? Like it just looks really pretty. I love um, playing with the under eye area. It just looks really fresh. So my my preference, I like to go almost more where you'd highlight. Like I start on the top of the cheeks. Everyone asks why I do concealer after. Um, but it's because I'm using it to brighten and to highlight. So I'm doing a two-in-one. I'm concealing and I'm highlighting. So I like to highlight the top of the cheek, which has a little bit of foundation. And then when there's not much left on my brush, I'll bring it under the eyes. Because you really need to be careful. Be super mindful of this under eye area. If you pack on a ton of product, it just looks heavy. So I'm going to do couple different brushes. This is a clean brush. I just want a smaller one. This is a synthetic domed brush. And these are actually great for concealer. This this is what you would use in the eyeshadow crease, but it's so fantastic for like a little tool under the eyes if you want to do some detail work. There's just like a couple areas I want a teeny teeny bit more coverage on Amanda, but I didn't want to use my big dome brush. Gorgeous. And we will highlight a little bit. So those of you in the comments, let me know what you think. So I kind of have a combo of things I do here on my channel. We're pretty much always live, which is fun. Um, and I do makeup on Mondays. So we do like the full look on the model. Um, and it's a little bit more chatty. And then on other days, I either try to pick like a topic and teach about that tip. But today we're doing full face pre because we did have a request to do that, but tell me what your preference is. Do you like the longer videos where you see everything? Like you see how I have a client that I meet, for, I meet all my models like right before we go live, so I don't know them. So Amanda's adorable and I love her, but we just met. Um, yeah, just kind of see how I like break it down and choose colors on them. Or do you like a good amount of um, mixing in with like the short videos? Let me know what you guys think. Okay, setting powder. This is what I was looking for. We're going to set under Amanda's eyes. I like to set under the eyes. 
pretty soon after doing the full blend because it prevents creasing. So I'll get it nice and buffed out and then I set it. Some concealers are self-setting. Like I know the MAC um, Pro Longer Concealer in like the little glass jar, that one sets matte. So that one I let dry completely before I set it. But some of them, like I've noticed with this Tarte one, I like to kind of set it like earlier on. I feel like it prevents creasing. I'm just gonna go around the nose. Do you get oily, Amanda? Not really. Okay, we're just gonna kind of mattify little areas. And then I, I love cream bronzers lately. Like that is what I do. But I think we'll do we'll do powder on Amanda to show you guys something different. Um, so if I do a powder bronzer, I'm gonna take like a really large dome brush in my setting powder, and I like to just give a nice dusting to the face where I'm going to apply the powder. So just to give it a little bit of a set, but not much, because Amanda does not have oily skin, and we don't want it to look dry. Okay, I'm gonna pull open the chat really quick. Oh good, the signal's good. Oh, Danielle's from Brazil, hello, mm -hmm. welcome. She says, love your video. What time is it in Brazil? Thank you for joining us. Um, oh, thank you guys. Danielle Angelique says that you guys like the longer videos. Well, great. I mean, they're fun for me. I like to film everything, mm -hmm. but I do want to be accommodating. Everyone has different preferences, so. Okay, so let's do powder bronze. Let's talk about powder bronzing because I lately have been doing so much cream on my channel. So Hoola bronzer is just a really great like mid-tone bronze that works fairly well across the spectrum of like light to medium tones. Um, so it's, it's one of the ones I have in my kit for those skin tones and I seem to gravitate towards it often. I like that it's a bronzer and a contour in one. Um, it, it just has a really great balanced tone I find so that I can contour it's not too warm where I can't contour but it's not too cool that I cannot also bronze I just feel like bronzing is so big in makeup right now it's very flattering it looks very fresh and because of all these very warm tone palettes like this Natasha Denona one we did on Amanda today those tones just like scream for bronzers they're like bronze me please make me gold like they that's what's flattering with them so i like to use the bronze contour so for my powder bronzers i've been experimenting with some different brushes lately um, and i just love these little angled guys i think they do a good job of really controlling where you're putting things and i feel like i can really get in the like sculpt out the cheeks without it looking splotchy I tested out, this is my powder brush, and this one's like a nice dome. I see a lot of people using these because they're very narrow at the tip and they can kind of swipe on the bronzer. Um, but for me, I felt like that would tend to look a little bit more patchy than these little angled guys, so that's what I like to use. So when you do the powder bronzer, you really need to blend as you go. The creams, ironically, if people think they're harder, I feel like they're much more forgiving. You can really blend and layer things, but the powders, like one heavy stamp and you're like, mm -hmm. oh no, <laughs> you have to blend it out. Um, on my clients, I, I layer so much and it's easier for me to get it even, but I feel like on myself and probably many of us, when you're like, okay, 10 minutes to get ready today, I'm going to do the bronzer. It's like, oh no, like if you're heavy handed or in a rush, like, I don't know. That's why I like the cream ones generally, but... So just blend as you go. And I'm doing this one as like a, a blush and a bronze. I also, so not only have I been loving cream bronzers, I have been loving liquid and cream blush so much, but I set you already, so I cannot do that. So today we'll <laughs> use powder brush for, you, blush for you guys. I'm always scared of the cream ones. I feel like they would be exactly opposite what you said I'll have to try them yeah no they're amazing you do have to go in with a light hand with the cream blushes mm -hmm. but they just look so much more natural like have you ever done 
blush and you're like in not great lighting you're in like a bathroom with no natural light and you're like oh I look so great and, and you, you walk out in the sun and you're like whoa that yeah. is like a giant splotch of like what yeah. I thought was this beautiful peach and now it's orange like that does not happen with the cream blush like it maintains it's like perfect shade and I feel like they don't oxidize and they kind of melt into the curves of your face so I just feel like they look more natural but they oh, are true. scary I think for people who have never done it okay we're gonna do the nose a little bit. I'm not going to contour Amanda's nose today because I've been doing that a lot lately and I don't always, but I do like to give it a little bit of, little bit of bronze. Okay, let's, so let's talk about powder blush. I'm going to tell you the very best shade of powder blush for everyone. I don't know why this shade is very magic. So this is Melba by MAC. I'll hold it up by Amanda. Um, so this is like this peachy pink like mid-tone blush it is so great on fair skin on medium skin on darker skins i just love it um and i love this is the anastasia blush brush um i like it because it's just like a little guy it's narrow and i can just build it up so i like to blend my blush as i go anything powder just has a tendency to to grab and it's harder to blend because if you think about it when you're doing a cream you can go in with a foundation brush or a beauty sponge and you can really like get in there and work it out and you can layer it like if you go too dark you can bring light onto it but when you're do doing powders it's like your topper like this is your top coat like you cannot yeah. <laughs> you can't buff it up or you'll lift everything that's underneath so that's why creams are so great and that's scary <laughs> This is a pretty color. I, I like, um, I tend to gravitate towards things with more of like a sheen to them. I just like that lot natural glow, but this blush is very matte. So I will put a topper on it, but it's just a really pretty, just a really pretty shade. Okay, so I am gonna top it with the bronzer. Okay, so I like how that's looking. So now, we're going to put this guy away and we're going to go in with um, some highlighting powders. So let's go for, we're going to go for the hourglass powders. So because Amanda doesn't get oily and she has very smooth skin, we're going to do some illuminating powder kind of everywhere. So I'm just going to set everything. This is an hourglass palette. Um, this is the ghost palette. They have an ambient lighting palette and I love those tones. They have more of a mid-tone in it i pulled it for something else so i don't have it near but that is that's a good one to kind of do all over face with they also have like the individual shades if you know your exact color you can do it but i like to mix so that's just going to give everything a nice sheen then we're going to go into add a little bit more of a topper so this is the dior backstage palette so this is like a very nice sheen. We have a bronzer, we have a blush, and then we have these two highlighting colors. So I'm gonna mix the two highlighting colors. See how that looks on Amanda. These are just more, um, more highlighty. They're just very, very glowy. You get the Dior Glow. So I like these in more narrow areas. In fact, I think I just like only this gold one on her. I mixed them. We'll have to make it even, so I'll mix them over here, but I think for you actually. I just like this gold guy. So you can too, you can put a little bit of highlighter under the brow if you want. Don't do too much, but if you're going for very glowy, you can get some glowy under there. And I love highlighter on the inner corner of the eyes. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna start just with this gold shade. And just pop it right. Right in the middle, that's pretty. This one's very natural. You can top it with this white one. If you want it to be a little bit brighter, I'll show you guys what that looks like. Okay, your lash is lifting a little bit in your corner. I was answering questions. I think I let the glue dry <laughs> a, little, a little long. Okay, so what I like to do with the lash lifts this is one of the reasons I like to do the lashes like middle of the makeup. Go ahead and look down for me because I can see how they wear. 
the way Amanda's eyes are shaped um, would have a little bit more tendency of like the corners lifting. So you can just apply some glue to the back of like your tweezers or a disposable wand or something like that. And then we're gonna let that dry and then I'm going to um, push it into her lash line. So let me check on, on the chat and then I'm gonna add some glow to Amanda's cheeks. Sometimes my personal chat gets like a lag. So if I miss your questions, ask them again, or usually producer Kelly lets me know. Um, oh, Eileen says, wow, so glam. Her eyes look amazing. Mm -hmm. I know, she's looking so stunning. Okay, and then Linda says she likes the longer ones where you're explaining. Oh, thank you, where you, she says she enjoys them. Okay, so I'm gonna top your blush. This is another MAC blush. This is a mineralized blush. It's called Give Me Sun. So this one is nice because it's like reflective. It has reflective particles on it. Cause I don't, I don't want Amanda's cheeks to be very matte cause nothing else is matte. So we're gonna add this glowy blush over top. So the original blush I did was like the tone of the blush. That's so like the color I wanted. And then we're topping it with some shimmers. Next, we are going to go in the Dior compact again to this bronzing color and we're going to take that and we're going to top all of our bronzed areas with that. So this is really pretty and I start on the cheeks because that's where I want like more depth of it to be. The cheeks can hold a lot of shine and a lot of illumination and it looks good. Other parts of the face you want to be a little more mindful of the shine you're doing. Okay, perfect. And the Dior, the Dior palette has the um, the pink like blush topper too, but we didn't really do any pinks. So we didn't do any rosy tones, so I'm not gonna use that today. Um, let's set your lashes. Go ahead and look down. Perfect. So it's it's Wednesday, and I generally I'm live Monday through Thursday, but I am gonna be out of town tomorrow. And Monday, so there will not be a live tomorrow Monday, but we will be back Tuesday with some more exciting glam. We're gonna do lips, then we're gonna go finish the eyes. So for lips, I, we're gonna use this NYX liner because I think I want to do a little overlining on Amanda. It will be fun. So this is like when I'm changing the lip shape. I really love this pencil. This is um, called Los Angeles is by NYX, but it's a great mid-tone, sort of a brown. This doesn't have warmth in it, so we're going to top, top it with a warmer lipstick. But I like it because it sort of mimics like a natural lip color, like with somebody with a lot of pigment in their lips. It almost has that sort of like red brown look. So I feel like it's really good to overline with, but you have to like also apply it to the center of the lip as well. I, my preference is to not have a line of liner and then your lipstick inside. So I think a lot of preference, people's preference is to also not do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't want to <laughs> like the lined lips. I just start small. I usually start at the cupid's bow and I'll sort of lift one side. You want to be mindful. We like the pouty look. So generally when you do overlining, you want to focus on like the center of the lips. If you extend this part of the lips too much, it's not my preference. It looks a little off. I like more of like the pouty look. So Push that in. If you guys have any questions, now's a good time to drop them. I like to be precise with my lips, but I I don't know. I feel like it's maybe boring for people to watch. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. I like to watch people get their lips done. Okay. So the thing the thing about overlining and stuff like that is the pencil can be applied. If you keep going over areas that looks darker than everything else and you want it to look even, 
So I kind of establish my shape of my lip first and I try to keep it even and blend as I go, but then I'll go at the end and I'll do some more buffing for the color. And then by the time I apply my lipstick, everything is a really nice base and that part is really easy and quick. Go ahead and close for me. Good. And you can correct areas if you want to with concealer. So the Cupid's bow, I don't like it to be too deep but I, you obviously don't want to completely get rid of it. And Amanda has good shaped lips, so I'm essentially just following her natural lip line and extending it above a little bit. Okay, so before I do the lipstick, I'm gonna grab a concealer and I'm gonna grab this little curved brush. And we're just gonna touch up anything we want before we do the lipstick, before it's like locked in. I'm using this curved brush for the curved areas of her lips, but I actually, like this other brush I'm holding, this straight one, is the best for lips in general. So I like to go in with my concealer. This is the same concealer I did under her eyes. And you wanna use like so minimal, like I'm, wipe, I'm swiping in her under eye concealer, then I'm wipe cleaning off the brush and just hardly using any to clean up because this is a lighter shade than her foundation, so you don't wanna go in with too much of it but I do like doing this with a lighter shade than the foundation because I feel like it sort of creates the illusion of fuller lips and it really, really makes them look precise. And be aware, like if you're doing this with a bright color, it the color, it gets into your brush and then it will mix with this concealer color. So you mm. could, yeah, you could, you could <laughs> just let me so yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, you'd have all this color around your lips. Yeah, exactly. It's, it would be funny looking. So you have to be careful. Switch to a new brush or wipe it off or something. <laughs> this is like the best technique for red lipstick. If any of you guys like to be bright, which you don't. You said you don't ever do bright lipsticks, right, Amanda? No, not really. But this is the best for that. But this is when it will, like, blend with your brush. Like, if you have red lipstick and you do this, eventually it starts to be like you're painting pink around your lips. <laughs> that makes sense. It's weird. Okay, so now that that is on, I'm going to actually use the same buffing brush and just sort of buff that concealer or that lip liner, I'm sorry, onto Amanda's full lips. And then we're going to top it with MAC lipstick called Kind of Sexy. <laughs> Lipsticks have the funniest things. I know. Like, why kind of sexy? Why not really <laughs> yeah. sexy? Or extra sexy? <laughs> it's a good, this is a good nude. It's very warm. It's like a peachy nude. But this is perfect because it's like the perfect color to go with the color palette that we chose. It's gonna look great with the blush. It's gonna look great with the eyeshadows. It's a little more lighter, so it's gonna um, brighten this lip liner that I just did. And you can do, when you apply the lip liner like I did, you can do an ombre look. We could just put this lipstick in the center of her lips and it would be really pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and top everything You have to be careful when you top though because you don't want to mess up the lines you just did. You want to top it like kind of exactly. So I'm just swiping that area and I like to get into the corners. It's the bottom lip line that I feel like tends to look like harsh with the liner. You have to top it correctly. Go ahead and lick your teeth for me a little bit. You have lipstick on that one side. Okay. We are going to add a little bit of curl to the lashes one more time. I'm all about the curl. I really noticed too, like, it's so helpful as a makeup artist to take photos of your client, especially if you have a good camera. Phone is good too. The phone cameras are so great now, but if you have like a DSLR or mirrorless camera, it really helps because the camera picks up detail that your eyes do not see. So that's what I use for the thumbnail. 
So when I'm piecing together the, th the thumbnail, when I put the before and after pictures, I can really see if I did a good job curling the lashes or not because if I curl them, they're very visible in the photo. They look really open and beautiful, but if you don't curl them, they just don't do as much for the eye. They just kind of hang forward. So, all right, we are going to go in with MAC Mascara. This is the 3D Black Lash. And when you do the extensions of the fake lashes, it, it truly doesn't matter so much the mascara formula that you use. I guess what really matters is if you have the type of eyes where you just don't want it to flake or to migrate down onto your skin. So that's all. But if you don't wear the fake lashes, then your mascara totally matters. Almost more so the brush than the actual mascara. Okay, so I'm just wiggling this. I'm connecting Amanda's natural lashes to the extensions. All right, go ahead and look up for me. And we're gonna hit these bottom lashes because she has nice bottom lashes. So we want to put mascara on them. Also, whenever I use smokiness under the eyes, I like to do bottom mascara. I feel like it completes the look. Hey, your bottom ones are thick. They look good. Thanks. <laughs> and long too. Okay, that is looking so good. So I'm just gonna top, once your eyes settle from me like <laughs> playing with them, I'm just gonna top the liner with some powder and let's go ahead and do lipstick. Let's do I'll probably do white, white Russian. I love, I love, love, love these um, buxom glosses. They're just the best. So I have a bunch of shades. I think I'm going to do white Russian or hot toddy. You know what? Maybe hot toddy because we did that. There's kind of an ombre effect going on right now, and I actually don't want more ombre. So hot toddy's just the best shade. This is another, like, universal. looks so gorgeous on everyone. I love it. Just want to give Amanda's lips some shine. We did that glitter in the eyes. Let's do, we did the shine on the face, so let's do the shine on the lips. Hot toddy's a very pretty, like warm, natural tone. So it's great as a topper. I'm gonna find a place to go, huh? Like, yeah, I know, right? No mask though. I know you're so <laughs> fancy. Oh yeah. Glass is not the friend of a mask. No. I always am so sad at myself when I do my makeup and I put gloss on. I'm like, ugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. It's going to get right inside. I know, just like no lip lipstick is the way to go. Or liquid lip or something like that. Okay, let's um, diffuse. We're going to go. So this is my eyeshadow brush. So we're going to go just sort of top. I'm going to have you look up. And I'm just very gently going to top this liner just to make it look even. You want to be careful because our under eye concealer is on and we do not want to make fallout now because we can't clean it up. Well, we can, but it just will be difficult. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with my shader brush. And we're going to go in, same to that brown. Look up for me. I'm going to hit this bottom. We're going to top it with a little bit of shimmer. So the shader brush is what had my shimmer colors on it. So we're just going to add a little bit of shimmer under the eyes. Be pretty. All right. Let's flash Amanda's before photos so you guys all can see. And then we will show you. Yay. <laughs> okay. And I'll check the questions. All right. Did we get the before photo? Perfect. Okay. Ready, Amanda? Ready. Yay. Oh, wow. <laughs> See, now how am I going to go out tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> you look gorgeous. Those eyes look awesome. They look pretty, huh? Do you like yeah. those colors? Yeah. So. Yeah, and I wouldn't normally use, like, that peachy of a color. Yeah. But I like it. Yeah, it looks scary in the pan. It's like, they're very peach, but they look stunning on. Oh, Amanda, you're I a baby. Go somewhere. You're so <laughs> beautiful. Thank you for being my model. Oh, you're thank so you. great. And thank you guys for watching. I'm going to check your questions really quick, because sometimes... Oh, we miss them when we're in. Oh, everyone's saying they love your eyeshadow. <laughs> it's pretty. Looks very beautiful. Amanda's gorgeous. And then, okay, good. I'm glad you guys like seeing how I shape the lips. <laughs>
Lips are one of the, I feel like lips and brows. Lips are hard. Well, I have small lips. You have great lips. But it's fun to, did you like the overlining? Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It's natural. The trick with overlining is to follow the natural lip shape and just go like a baby, baby at a time. Like a little, little extending. And to use the right um, liner, I feel like. Okay. (laughs) Um, Amanda looks stunning, mm-hmm. absolutely beautiful. Okay, and then Angelique says, would it be wrong to do a matte lip with shiny eyes or vice versa? No, absolutely not. It's not never wrong to do a matte lip. Um, I just like, when I'm going super glam, I love a shiny lip. I'm into gloss. I'm glad it's back. Matte lips had their moment, and now <laughs> I feel like we're going back into the shine, but it's not wrong to do a matte lip. They look great. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to think of a scenario when it would like be incorrect, but no, it looks good. You can do matte or shiny, I think, with anything. You can pair shine with a matte eye or matte with a matte eye. I think it's fine. All right, that's all the questions that are showing up for me right now. If they load after we end, I'm sorry. Um, like I said, I'm going out of town. I'll not be here tomorrow, but I will be back next Tuesday. So I would love to see you guys all then. I will see you. Bye. Mm-hmm.